Hi everyone, due to some circumstances, I'm going to be the voice in today's video. Thanks for your understanding. You have to admit, movies are full of magic. On the screens, we can see new lives, fantastic worlds, and people doing the impossible. What else can it be if not magic? But the magic that happens behind the scenes is really special. The work of people who can make the viewer believe in what is happening, even if it does not have anything to do with reality. For this, we should thank not only the actors and VFX artists, but also the costume designers and set designers, as well as stage directors, makeup artists, composers, and musicians. So let's visit the sets of some recent blockbusters and let's find out exactly what was going on there. Let's get it on. Star Wars Episode 9 The Rise of Skywalker Star Wars Episode 9 The Rise of Skywalker is the final film of the greatest film saga of the 20th century. What are you doing there, 3PO? Taking one last look, sir. My friends. Everyone has their own opinion about the film, but you must admit that J.J. Abrams has done a tremendous job to end the trilogy. The picture was shot in 65mm film, unlike the previous two 35mm films. Why? To bring back the sensations that arose when watching the original trilogy. Moreover, the director let the actors improvise more. And although the work had to be done in a very short time, everyone tried to do their best. American composer John Williams has created many melodies we all know. Among his works are the famous soundtrack from Jaws the memorable Hedwig's theme from Harry Potter, and of course, the music from Star Wars, including the Imperial March. Of course, he worked on the rise of Skywalker too. Just like in the previous films, all music was recorded by an orchestra of 102 people with Los Angeles Master Chorale. By the way, Williams himself admits that he hasn't seen any of the Star Wars films. You what? One of the most amazing details from the rise of Skywalker is, of course, Carrie Fisher's appearance. The actress died a few months after shooting The Last Jedi, and yet, Leia appeared in the next film. J.J. Abrams knew that he had to feature Fisher in The Rise of Skywalker because the film was conceived as the culmination of the whole saga. Of course, there was not even a slight possibility of somebody playing the role of Princess Leia, and creating a digital model seemed like a very bad idea. So, before he started working on the script, Abrams asked Carrie Fisher's brother and her daughter permission to use the image of the actress. They agreed, and as a result, they found a brilliant solution. Using the footage of Carrie Fisher that was not used in the final version of The Force Awakens. After examining the footage, it turned out that the team had enough material to bring Leia back to life in The Rise of Skywalker. However, the footage had to be modified to make it look real. They changed everything, the background, the clothes, even her hair, but not the face of the actress. Thus, all emotions remained authentic. By the way, the same technology but in reverse was used for the memories of the past, rejuvenating both Leia and Luke with footage from the old movies. Fast and Furious, Hobbs and Shaw the Fast and Furious movie series may seem hollow and even ridiculous to some, but even though these films won't be nominated for an Oscar, they are still fun to watch. And the action scenes on the screen are amazing. After eight movies, which grossed over $5 billion worldwide, the creators of the franchise made the first spin-off, Fast and Furious, Hobbs and Shaw. Without Vin Diesel, but with a bunch of other bald guys. And of course, the action scenes throughout the film took our breath away. No wonder, because the director of the film, David Leitch, used to work as a professional stuntman and he knows exactly how to get the best result. For example, he knows exactly how to drop a person on a car to make it look realistic. Explosions, fights, shootings, military helicopters, and of course, cars rushing at great speed. Something is on fire, someone hits somebody, other people scream. Although the key scenes were shot in Hawaii and Los Angeles, the main shooting took place in the UK, from London and Glasgow to an abandoned power plant in South Yorkshire. And having such different locations only made the film cooler. Terminator Dark Fate the shooting of the latest film about the fight between mankind and machines started in May 2018 in central Madrid, under the working title Terminator 6 Phoenix. In this film, Spain played the role of Mexico, and the city did a great job. For example, the car chase and the best traditions of Terminator were filmed on a highway near Murcia in southern Spain. Rev-9 captures a huge truck to chase the heroes, lifting cars and throwing them aside like toys. In the end, only Sarah Connor can stop it. 
Filming this episode was extremely difficult. It took weeks of work and the involvement of professional stuntmen. The temperature reached over 43 degrees Celsius, which made the work of the cast and crew even more difficult. Most of the tricks you see in the film are real, and behind the wheel of almost every car was a stuntman. It's no coincidence that the chase scene itself looks so dynamic. The goal was for the audience to feel the Terminator chasing them. Them being the audience and not the characters in the film. Did the director succeed? We believe he did. Ford vs Ferrari this film about a famous racing confrontation in the 60s was released in the autumn of 2019. Christian Bale played the role of racing driver Ken Miles, while Matt Damon portrayed Carol Shelby. The film was nominated for Oscars, Golden Globes, and many other prestigious awards. It won in some nominations and received positive reaction from critics and the audience. Overall, it is an excellent biopic, but the film would not have been exciting enough if it weren't for the realistic races. The racing scenes that appear in the film were filmed on Auto Club Speedway, although it was supposed to be the Daytona International Speedway. Many other scenes were filmed on a Honda test track. Also, some scenes featured racetracks in Georgia. And there is an explanation for this. Daytona, which was once a famous racetrack, has long been modernized and looks too different from the way it looks in the 60s. Car coordinator Rick Collins was responsible to find the amazing and realistic cars for the movie. Among the cars in the film, you can see a Daytona Coupe, a Ford GT40 MKI, and a CD SB60. Pujo. But most sports cars were specially built for the film because the originals are now stored in museums and private collections. No one would lend such valuable cars for a movie, even for millions of dollars and the opportunity to show it to the world. John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum when the first John Wick movie came out, hardly anyone could have predicted how popular this character would become. But thanks to Keanu Reeves, the dynamic action on the screen, and the energy of the film, it turned out to be an unexpected hit. Then, a sequel was made, and in May 2019, the audience could enjoy John Wick Chapter 3. The man who created the story about John Wick is Chad Stahelski, director and former stuntman. He claims that 99% of the elaborate tricks in the film are like dance scenes. More than pirouettes, this is all about body language. And judging from the combat scenes in John Wick, he's right on the spot. In addition, when staging the fights, the director was bearing in mind Keanu's age. It had been a long time since Matrix, and his arms and legs could be less flexible. The manner and style of shooting also helped to make the actor look like a scary fighter, even without the help of stuntmen. <laughs> And we must say that the film manages to create exactly this impression. But there aren't many visual effects in John Wick 3. The VFX artists mostly had to align the shots, complete the background, and add some gun effects. The rest was the work of the actors. Creed 2 Years go by, and the public interest in the Rocky franchise does not fade. In autumn 2018, the world saw the film Creed 2. The plot continues the story of Creed and Rocky IV, and yes, Ivan Drago is back in the game. A truly epic comeback, which is enough reason to watch the movie. In preparation for the film, which ends with an epic boxing match, the actors had to train for months. Getting into shape and learning the choreography is daily work that requires discipline, attention, and long hours of practice. In addition, in Creed 2, the director decided to focus on realism to offer the audience truly exciting battle scenes. Although this does not mean that the actors hit each other like in real life. They probably heard about Stallone's trauma on the set of Rocky IV. Back then, a particularly strong blow from Dolph Lundgren almost left the movie without its main character. Stallone was in intensive care for eight days. Therefore, the fights in Creed II were staged. But the audience outside the ring is real. They are probably paid extras, but their reaction made the film even more realistic. Dude, are you looking for new technologies and great gadgets? Are your thoughts focused on the future? Do you love huge vehicles and can't imagine your life without robots around you? Then visit TechZone and you'll find all this and more. The link is in the description.
You interested? Great. 